So just briefly recap, we did play your original video uh, as to why on the, you filmed it the morning you left Qantas. You were doing your tie up and you're saying this is the last time I'll fly an aeroplane. So basically tell us what happened following that video and how you wound up in Canberra last week. Well, after the video, uh, which I was told by others, I'm not into social media, I don't know how to do the stats and everything on it, but um, someone told me that within 12 hours of it being posted, it had 7 million views around the world, which astounded me. But what followed from that, Rowan, was uh, a massive influx of messages, and we're still getting about 30,000 messages a week wow. from people in abject despair, um, people from all walks of life, everyday people, uh, well-educated people. Who, uh, who have not been able to get the information they need to provide informed consent, which we're told is our legal right to have. And their despair ranged from everything to uh, having family members suicide, the lockdowns destroying their lives, businesses, marriages, families, just abject despair. And it, it broke my heart. And uh, my wife and I have been running an organisation to help the adult victims of childhood sexual abuse for about 15 years. And we, we have a heart to serve people in despair. And I just took on the mantle to try and give them a voice. And, and my big message was to try and make each and every one of them feel that they weren't alone. And, um, and what happened in uh, Canberra at the uh, protest was monumental in proving to them that they weren't alone, that they're part of a massive family of various walks of life, different educational backgrounds, service backgrounds, and also... Um, you know, a few different agendas, but a, a lot of very unhappy people coming together to try and support one another. Rita. What do you say to people who, who say this is a fringe group because we've got vaccination rate now close to 95% in this country, so this is a very tiny group, or does the group encompass those who have had the vaccine but are very much against mandates and the compulsory nature of it? Oh, thanks for that question, Rita. You've, you nailed it with the tail end of your question. Uh, I shared the soundstage with people who have been vaccinated, uh, pilots, you know, other, other people in respected positions, uh, war veterans, uh, service veterans, police officers, ambulance officers, nurses, um, many of them. This, for me, this, is, this isn't about who is jabbed and who isn't. This is about freedom, the freedoms that are being lost. We have... Um, unavoidably, it seems, given away freedoms in this country that were fought and died for. There are 100,000 white crosses on foreign battlefields with Australians lying under them, and they fought and died so we wouldn't have to rally. Uh, and if we did, we had the freedom to do it. So this is not about... These are not anti-vaxxers. These are people who are fighting for freedom that governments are taking away. You guys cover this all the time. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing a government that is averse to any kind of risk manipulating and controlling every aspect of our lives. And that's why they're there. That's why I'm there. I don't care whether people have been vaccinated or not. I gave permission uh, before I realised what was happening to uh, a nursing home to vaccinate my mum with Pfizer. Uh, and, and then after that, I was put under pressure to do it for the mandate. And when I started realising that there was so much about this we didn't know, I couldn't give an informed consent. James. Talk to us, though, about um, what you saw down at the, the rallies in, in Canberra and also how do you feel that the media is getting wrong what people are standing for? Because we see the media portraying this as entirely a group of uneducated yahoos who are, in fact, actually dangerous, scary. Uh, the Canberra Times had a front page on Sunday saying, you know, go home. Um, where, is, where is the press getting this wrong and are they going to wind up losing trust themselves? Oh, the press have already lost trust. I think their ratings, uh, their ratings are going down. Legacy media is really struggling. Um, they were propped up to the tune of $41 million by the federal government uh, for being cooperative in presenting a narrative that a lot of people are seeing holes in. Um, so the press, the press are getting it wrong. Look, I had one uh, political editor from one of the main uh, mainstream uh, networks um, put in a, a, a fairly factual representation of one of the earlier rallies we had there. And I, I contacted him to thank him uh, for being pragmatic in his approach. And, uh, and he, was, he was great. And I managed to get an interview with him uh, during one of the rallies we had earlier in the week um, behind the group. Uh, it was a short 10-second grab. You know, you guys know how that works. And I just had to present the basic reason why most of Australians were there. Um, so 
I think uh, legacy media is complicit. I really do. I, I, you know, I used to follow. I used to follow the average mainstream thing all my life. I mean, um, I'm just an average, every, average, everyday Aussie. And uh, legacy media has, if, if legacy media had reported the facts, uh, this would have been over 18 months ago. The whole, the whole so, reason. Sorry, Graham. So just tell us, um, you know, for example, you have become a, a figurehead to many people because you are articulate. Um, and you spent 40 years in your profession. You were a senior pilot. You're the top of your game. Uh, and yet that's all thrown away over the mandate. So just ask, firstly, did Qantas ever talk to you? Have they ever said, oh, look, you know, sorry, mate, you know, nothing we can do, this sort of thing? Um, and how... And in, wh in what way have other people... You mentioned nurses and truck drivers and others... They don't have your ability as, as, as a leader, as someone who can, uh, who's been at the top of your game. How do they cope and survive? You clearly have, but how have they? Well, we, um, uh, as a result of all the despair in the, uh, in the population, um, various, I put out a call because uh, we were getting messages from people who were about to commit suicide by the thousands. Um, and that's no exaggeration. And I put out a plea for any unemployed uh, medical health care professionals or mental health care professionals who were wanting to support uh, their brothers and sisters in Australia um, to, to help me do something. And a group was formed called Hoodies Helpers, which has hundreds of thousands of members all around the world now, uh, even over in Europe and America, South Africa, of people who are just supporting others in despair and making them feel like they do have a voice and making them feel like they're part of a family. And so for me, that's important. I'm seen as a leader. I'd rather be seen as a spokesperson because there are many political agendas tied up in this whole thing. The freedom movement is a very complex beast. Uh, I have ventured into that realm uh, with, with trepidation. I mean, I've never been in the freedom movement. There are fringe elements in there. But the, the, the people I'm speaking for, like war veterans, uh, the nurses and doctors and everything, they just see me as articulate in a way that I can try and get their message across. And if that's what I'm, if that's what I'm empowered to do, then I will do that. Uh, I'm absolutely against any radical behaviour, subversive behaviour, uh, anything like that. This has to be done with compassion and love and with peace, because that's how Australia is. Um, when, when our backs are to the wall, we 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 harness incredible energy and spirit, and I want that to be harnessed to bring this country to a much better place. Rita, very quickly. Do you have any hopes of flying again? No, Rita. Um, look, Qantas didn't fire me. Um, I, when I made the video, I realised that by posting it, I virtually put the death knell on my career. I did it to give the young pilots who have still got a career ahead of them a chance to fight the mandates and keep going and, and live into their dream. And that's the whole purpose I've been doing this. Um, I've been approached to run for politics and all that sort of stuff. I'm not interested in the political arena. I'm, I'm an authentic individual who is living in the spirit of the Anzacs, and I just want to promote that. It, it's an honour to represent these people. But as for flying again, look, 6 million passengers over 12 million miles, 36,000 flying hours. I've done enough. I'm tired. My body's up. <laughs> Graham Hood. Well, I'm, I'm sure many of us probably flew on your planes at one time or another, and thank you, uh, if we did, and for looking after us and our safety. Uh, great to talk to you, Graham Hood, and uh, keep up the great work, and thanks for coming on Outsiders this morning. Thanks for the voice, guys, and God bless you. Love it.